Hi, my name is Eden. I'm a developer here at Chimera Systems, and I'd like to talk a little bit about Chimera's new InfluxDB module. The module provides a driver so that Ignition can store and query tag data using InfluxDB. And compared to MySQL, which is a good overall relational database system, Influx is a NoSQL system that's specialized for time series data. It's focused on high write and high query loads. So Influx then would be a good system for any Ignition systems that need to store large amounts of data and our module allows that communication to happen. <clears throat> so I'd like to uh, show a demo of how this works, but first of all, you're going to need an Ignition server and an Influx server. Uh, the Influx server can be on the same system as Ignition or on a separate one, and you can download it from their website following uh, this link. And then just click on the download button and follow the wizard to get started. I'm not going to walk through how to install the server, but I do want to show how our module works. After you install the module, as usual, under the Modules tab, go to Tags and History, where you can create a new Influx historian. I already have one here, so we can just go into the settings and have a look. So you're going to need the URL for the Influx server, as well as whatever authentication settings you have. Uh, if you haven't set up authentication, you can just leave that uh, as the default settings. Our module follows Ignition's store and forward system, but we use a tape-based store instead of the HSQ1 that Ignition provides. This gets around issues where write sizes are too large to be cached properly. Similar to store, Ignition store and forward system, we have store settings like uh, write time, write size, and max records in the buffer. We also have an option to compress tag quality data, uh, where the tag quality for each in entry is intermittently stored, but it improves the write speed. There's also some options for the size of the batches that are pushed to influx and how often that occurs. To set up history with Influx, go to the tag, enable history, select the provider, choose the sample mode to be tag group, and choose the default historical tag group. To view the tag history, open a window, and drop an easy chart onto it. Under the Influx folder are 20,000 tags pushing data to an Influx database. Half of the tag values are float data, and the other half are Boolean data. The data comes from an internal dev tool that simulates OPC values, and through scripting, we were able to set up tag history for all 20,000 tags. To browse the data from the Influx database, double click on the chart, grab whatever tags that we want displayed, and then they'll appear on the easy chart. To measure the performance of Influx, Influx has a command line tool that gives the number of points written per second at 10 second intervals. So what I've done is take the latest value bind it to a tag, and then store its data so that we can visualize it. And so we can see that data here. To show what our module can do, what I'm going to do is take that Influx folder with 20,000 tags and duplicate it. I'll just copy and paste it 
And what should happen is Ignition will create the new tag paths uh, and new names for them. But it, even though the data is still identical, Ignition is going to store them as normal. And so is going to end up pushing to the same influx endpoint. So what we should see on the tag is a performance jump. And there's the jump, and it's just a little slow on the tag there. And what we can do is we can repeat this and see a jump in the number of writes each time uh, again and again. I'm going to skip ahead here in a bit, uh, but what I'm going to do is duplicate this uh, several more times, and I cap out at about 105,000 writes a second uh, with our default gateway settings with about 140,000 tags. Uh, you'll see it in the chart uh, in a moment, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as a comparison, show off what the MariaDB can uh, do as well. So I'm just going to skip ahead here. Skipping ahead, can see I let it run for a little while longer before removing the influx tag folder and setting up a Maria folder. Um, can see from the get-go, hasn't really gone up that high. Where I'm pointing to right there, that little flat area is kind of where I started, but that dips from where I actually uh, restarted the influx server before starting the test. So that's what I'm kind of drawing attention to. Uh, but just like before, uh, 20,000 tags uh, pushing to MariaDB this time. Uh, it kind of capped out at about 10,000 or so, so not quite as high as the initial influx uh, results. But maybe if we copy and paste, we will see what happens and then let it run for a little bit. While we wait for that to go, uh, let's have a look at some of the store and forward settings I have set up here for MariaDB. You can find this under config and store and forward. And you can see that I set the memory buffer size to 25,000, max records in the memory to 250,000, write size for store and forward as 20,000, and write time for store and forward as 10,000. Coming back to this, uh, we can see that the graph hasn't really changed too much. Uh, when we left, it was around uh, 5,000. It's still around that same value. So maybe what we could do is copy and paste some more tags to see one more time, see if it can jump. And um, no, no real, no real bump uh, waiting for that trigger. OK, so nothing there. Uh, when, you, when you look at the store throughput, that's the store system, not the forwarding system. Forwarding isn't really working well for MariaDB at the moment, so it might just be that we're overloading it. So maybe if we remove some of the tags, um, maybe the forwarding system starts back up. The store has dropped by quite a bit, but the forwarding hasn't really changed at all. So that might just be the limit of what MariaDB can handle, even at about 20,000 tags. So that's the end of the demo. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. The Chimera Influx module is still currently under development, so some features will change or be added or removed in the future. So please bear that in mind. You can find us at chimerasystems.com. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at sales or support at chimerasystems.com. Thank you.